How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to another Adventure Quest video and for today's video as you guys can tell from the title already today we will be looking at the top 10 things that I want to see added to Adventure Quest. So this can be added anytime it doesn't have to be next year but I just hope that these things will come into the game eventually. Now this is 100% my opinion only so you can feel free to agree or disagree with me but do let me know your reasons down in the comments below and i'm very interested to hear what, uh, what are the top 10 things that you guys want to see added to the game as well okay so these things can range from anything that is a uh, big game changing mechanics to even small simple bug fixes you know anything under the sun let your imagination go wild but without further ado let us get started Okay, so to kickstart the list, the, num the number 10 thing that I want to see added into the game or sort of changed is potions and element swapping deducts your goal in one shot. Okay, so if you guys have not noticed this before and I think a lot of people probably won't notice this because people usually don't swap their elements uh, very often or even use potions in that sense but if you see here if i buy the potion for 443,553 gold i have to wait and the gold uh, deducts you know in small amounts it doesn't deduct in one shot so it does take a little while to load for potions it's not that bad because it's not that expensive but if i go all the way back to battle on right here Okay, and I want to switch my no drop element here. As you guys can see, where is the no drop element? Uh, guardian equipment. Okay, so guardian equipment. If I want to change equipment here, it costs 26 million gold. And I have to wait for a good 5 to 10 minutes for them to deduct the gold. I think the deduction comes in like... 10,000 or 100 I think it's 100,000 denominations so you have to sit here waiting quite a little while for the goal to deduct I do not know why this is the case for just uh, potions and for changing your no drop element it's the it doesn't have this problem when you're buying items inside of the game you know it's just a little it's a small little annoyance to me in my opinion like you won't be buying potions all of the time and you definitely won't be changing your no drop element all of the time so you know it's a uh, once in a long while type of thing that you have to endure but why even let us endure the pain of sitting through this thing in the first place like i'm pretty sure there are systems in place that allow them to just deduct the goal in one shot i don't know if it's because they need to add the effects of the potion into your character or they need to update the character some of the character stuff for changing the elements but you know make the goal uh, deduction immediate uh, one shot you deduct that amount of gold so you don't have to sit here waiting for the gold to uh, be paid in like 100,000 denominations because that really takes a while and it's a little bit annoying to sit through so it's just a small little bug fix that hopefully the staff can do to improve the overall quality of life inside of the game Bye. and for number nine on the list we have faster ways to untrain your stats okay so the number one way of untraining your stat currently is to go to the untrainer and then click on the stat that you want to untrain click on his jaw let him kill you and you have your stat untrained the problem with this is that it only untrains in denominations of five so if you have 250 of one stat and you want to untrain it all the way down to zero it's gonna take a long while even if sir pones a lot just one shots you all the time it's still going to take a very very long while to untrain stats and i do not know why you have to go through this super painful process of untraining your stats like you can just untrain your stats within five seconds inside of dragon fable i don't know why it's so difficult to do so inside of adventure quest sure you can use the uh house items to train your stats faster but as far as i know there isn't any faster way to untrain your stats apart from letting sir pones a lot one shot you after grabbing his uh after stealing his job but still that's still a very very painful process and you can see here number one and number two items are uh, both just small little quality of life changes that i hope the staff can implement to the game to make our lives a lot more easier rather than uh spending time on doing all these uh small things that really you know you should be able to do within a couple of seconds why are they making us spend a long time going through all of these things you know what i mean so that is number nine on my list number eight 
on the list is DF and MQ armors. That's right, guys. I want to see Dragon Fable, Dragon Lord exclusive armors inside of the game, and MacQuest Star Captain exclusive armor inside of the game. Sure, we had something very similar with the recent Mastercraft set this year, the Haunted Dragon Lord armor. But what I really mean is, I want something that you can only unlock inside of the game, preferably an armor, uh, when you have a membership in one of the other two games like i know dragon fable has something for guardians and for mech quest you also have something for guardians uh they have something for dragon lords inside of mech quest i cannot really remember but we don't have such a system inside of adventure quest why is that so i do not know why uh both aq and mq has it but no why mq and df both has it but aq does not does not have this particular system i think it's a great way to generate revenue for both of the other games at the same time and you don't really have to make the armor op just make it something that is strong something that is usable and you know it's never too late to implement it and what better way to uh get started right now while dragon fable is still uh, pretty hotly popular right now and on top of that you can also take this chance to revive mech quest which is pretty much a dead game at this point so it's a uh, sort of a win-win if you ask me it will not only encourage people to spend more in both df and mq but at the same time it also creates uh something new for people to to look forward to inside of AQ something that they want to get you know especially for rare collectors such as myself and we all know that the AQ community has plenty of big whales that will just shell out cash to get the latest item and they are more than willing to shell out 20 bucks for a membership in the other two games when they are already willingly paying hundreds of dollars for new Z token packages that come out or even thousands of dollars for the donation contest that we have uh, every once in a while so that will be number eight on my list now for the next item on the list i want people to be able to buy back their soul rest give people their ability and i know very well that aq already keeps records of every single player's data what they buy what they have sold off so if you ask me i don't think it's too difficult of a system to implement they already have this system in place for aq worse so i do not know why they can't implement this system for the classic aq as well i don't think it'll be too difficult to implement in my opinion and how do i know they keep a record of all of the items that we buy and sell it's because uh just a short little story here i'm going to digress a little bit okay uh there was this one time when i was sorting out my inventory and i actually sold off one of my thunderbird uh items by accident i believe it was the thunderbird helm or was it the shield i cannot remember it was the miscellaneous item i think let's let me see where is it now uh i forgot what is it called yeah basically it was a donation item or something like that in was it was it in my shed vault yeah i cannot remember where where was it was it the shield or was it the maybe it was the shield and not the miscellaneous item god Yeah, it was the Thunderbird Jow Shield, yeah. So, as you can see, it's all the way at the bottom of my inventory. And I actually sold it off by mistake when I meant to uh, shift it up and down. Uh, it was a stupid and uh, honest mistake of mine. Like, uh, it was entirely my fault. But, you know, I sent a message to the support team asking if uh, they could help me put the item back because i saw it on accident it was a complete mistake i apologize for the mistake and i take full responsibility for the mistake thankfully for me they were kind enough to put it back they made a one-time exception according to them and they put the item back so very very grateful to the aq staff they did not have to grant this request of mine because it is uh, no fault other than my own fault so uh instead why not just have this system where you can buy back the rest that we sold off? I'm sure that'll make a lot of players happy because a lot of the older players especially, they have sold off many rares that they sort of regret selling off now. And I've been seeing a lot of these on the uh, battle on forums lately. So I think it's a system that is not too difficult to implement and at the same time will please a lot of players. And on top of that, um, if you are scared people will actually abuse the system for whatever weird reason you can just implement a buyback price of sorts maybe make it full price or even half price i don't know the staff can uh, work that out on their own or maybe even double the price you know make people 
uh, pay the price for selling off their rares, whether it be accidentally or purposely, you know, it cannot be the case whereby it's another sort of free inventory space for them. You know what I mean? So make people pay the price for buying back the rares. If it's a token item, make it cost tokens. If it's a gold item, make it cost tokens. But, you know, just give people that ability there and I'm sure many, many players will be happy with this uh, neat little feature if it was ever added into the game. <laughs> Alright, the next thing that I want to see added inside of AQ is the retro option for class armors. That's right guys. So you guys know that the Paladin armor was recently revamped this year and I sort of like to see the retro option added. Like you can just make it a skin or something. Uh, much like Dragon Fable how they have the retro option available for classes that have their artwork revamped okay uh, i know the paladin the necromancer and i can't remember what other armors uh df has like there's the option for uh players to uh, choose the retro artwork or the newer artwork i hope that uh, something similar can be done for aq as well i understand that aq is a little bit different because aq they completely revamped all of the skills completely revamped the entire artwork the entire animations so it may be a little bit difficult to recommend but i definitely wouldn't mind if they uh just stick the old artwork back in there you know for nostalgia feels you know nostalgia reasons like obviously in my opinion at least i feel that the new artwork looks way better but you know let the option be there for players who want to reminisce about the old aq uh, let players have something that they remember about AQ, you know, because this new artwork is not something that uh, many of the old players are familiar with. Let them have a sense of familiarity when they play the game. And it's uh, the reason why people play still play AQ nowadays, at least in my opinion, is mainly for nostalgia reasons. And it's because they played it so much as a kid. At least for me, it's a big part of why I still continue to play, why I still continue to love the game. But the game has already come to a point whereby it has changed so much in terms of artworks, in terms of like the general feel of how the game works is still mostly the same of course there are many different metas and strategies that evolved that different that uh, obviously wasn't there in the past but uh, you know the artwork is something that we can still have you know what i mean and they've already done something with the sound effects here okay whether you want to use the old sound effects or the new sound effects so why not just do the same thing for the armor artwork as well i'm sure it's not too hard i mean they already have the old armor art it's just a case of putting it back and let people switch between the two you know what i mean so that is it from the sixth thing that i want added into aq now we are halfway through the list and the fifth thing that I want to see inside of AQ is simplified writing. Okay, uh, no offense to the current writer uh, who is doing all the quests right now. I really do appreciate the hard work that uh, he or she is putting in. But I feel that the English is a little bit too complicated in my opinion. Uh, don't get me wrong, I can still understand it. But many people, I think the English may be a little bit too uh, complex for them or complicated for them you know a lot of big words and uh, it's basically a wall of text for every single dialogue as you can see here like in my opinion it's still better than the old days whereby uh, all the quests were in those were like too simple and it was full of grammatical and spelling mistakes and that was just horrible but nowadays the english i find it a little bit too profound for people to understand like when you're playing a game you don't want to be bombarded with a wall of text that you have to read or you know a whole bunch of uh, dialogue with super complicated words i'm sure this is not what people sound like when they are talking like this this is like you don't converse in in <laughs> english that is so complicated well at least i don't i don't really know how people in the aq universe likes to converse but uh, i'm pretty sure normal people don't converse in such a complicated form of english so maybe uh i don't know what's the right word to put here maybe dumb it down a little bit like i think that the quests like in my recent uh ultimate video i uh in my recent nostalgia quest video the ultimate saga quest i find that quest to be very well written i don't know who the writer for that quest was but i think it's the perfect balance like you don't get the uh, crappy English from the super old quests that is full of grammatical errors and stupid jokes but at the same time you don't get the super complicated 
um, English from today's classes and you don't get a huge wall of text either. It's just nice. It's a perfect balance in my opinion. I don't know who the writer for that quest was and I don't know if the writer is still currently working uh, for AQ or AE for that matter. But I think that's the perfect middle ground that I want to see and I think a lot of players will appreciate that as well. Like the dialogue is easy to understand it uh, makes the story flow very nicely and at the same time it doesn't have any uh you know grammatical or spelling errors that make ju that just makes it uh, hard to understand this on the other hand yes the english is perfect but you know it's a little bit too hard to understand in my opinion for layman people so that is something that i would like to see changed inside of aq the fourth thing that I want to see inside of AQ is more variety than stun nuke meta. Okay, stun nuke has been the meta for I don't know how many years now. Like all you do is click on essence or get maximum SP, purple rain everything, cast all of your stun effects, all of your buffing effects and then purple rain everything back and boom one shot, two shot the monster and you are done. Like this has been the meta for so freaking long and I know, I don't know if, if we will already see the nerf by the time this video comes out because I'm not going to release this video that soon. This video will probably come out a week or two weeks after I'm done with the recording right now. So I don't know if the Essence Op and the Purple Rain nerf will come out by the time this video comes out. But the staff, they already did something to a similar item which was the discounted Mogloween candy bag. What they did was they... Uh, actually kept the number of users to two. I can't remember if it was per turn or per battle, but uh, I don't really like that change. Sure, it's a step in the right direction to make people rely on stun nuking a little bit lesser and make the whole conversion items a bit less OP, but I think that's not how you should do it. Rather, I feel uh, what the staff should do is increase the cost or have the cost uh, increase exponentially each time you use the item similar to how the uh dragon lord's will shield works i think this is a very well designed item like yes you can uh purple rain and then you know click on it and then uh each time you click on it the cost will increase okay it, the more times you click on it in the same turn that means people can't abuse it and can't click on it too too many times in one turn rather i feel i feel that this is probably the best solution to the uh, whole broken items meta, broken stun nuke meta because I think that capping the number of times that people can click is not really the way to go at least in my opinion. Uh, many people have already expressed displeasure at this way of balancing things or rather the whole balancing things in general because they think it's not fun. I feel that the game still needs to be balanced because right now we are just the stun nuke meta is really just too OP but uh, I believe the correct way to balance it is to you know make it similar to Haunted Dragon Lord's will uh, how the entire item works make the cost increase for each time that people click on it and on top of that uh, purple rain just increase the cost for it like you don't need to uh, you know change the how the spell works entirely just increase the cost make it cost like 300 something SP for one uh, for one casting so if you cast it the first time it's free and then you cast it to get all of your SP HP everything back the second time make it cost like 300 something uh, SP so people actually have to save some SP in order to cast it and if they can't cast it back then uh, they basically screw themselves the problem with purple rain is that it costs so little SP to cast like uh, I'm going to flee this battle because I didn't see how much it costed just now okay so if I cast purple rain one time just look at how much it costs to cast. It's basically a free cast, if you will. So if I want to cast it again, okay, 1436, 1387. Okay, so it's like 40 to 50 SP to cast. Wait, let me see. 46, 49 SP only to cast Purple Rain. I'm not sure if my math is correct here, but 49 SP only to cast Purple Rain is essentially a free cast. It's way too cheap. Make it 300 something SP so people have to save SP in order to cast it. And they can't cast it back on time, then they screw themselves for that battle. You know what I mean? Uh, sorry for the whole digression thingy. I know we should be talking about the uh, variety of different uh, metas rather than the whole stun new rather than just focusing on this whole stun meta but this is the root of the problem in my opinion if you nerf 
the whole stun nuking thing if you make people think twice about using purple rain using essence or all that kind of stuff then uh, um, and for items like essence op and all of that don't cap the number of times it can be used rather uh lower the conversion rate you know what i mean so maybe if you click on it one time it causes fit it causes 100 hp but only regenerates 20 sp something like that you know what i mean then people will be uh, more careful when using it it wouldn't be so broken of an item and at the same time people still get a fun and they get a choice of uh, choosing how many times they want to click it rather than right now it's almost almost a one-to-one -one conversion and that just makes it stupidly op like look at this you see what i mean yeah the conversion rate is just way too high right now and that's why this item is broken so if you nerf all of these items which they will soon i don't know how exactly they will nerf it i hope they take my suggestions into consideration then you'll see a variety more variety of different builds inside of the game i want to see uh defensive builds being viable defensive builds have never really been viable inside of the game simply because it's just so much efficient to finish all the battle quickly but i want to see defensive builds have more use uh, maybe even become the meta I don't really know because we've seen offensive builds for so many times now offensive uh, warriors offensive uh, majors offensive beastmasters you know but not so much of defensive builds when will we see a fully defensive beast ranger meta I don't know like sure there are some people playing these builds but these people like they are far and few in between and the build is just not as efficient as a stun nuke build at least in the current meta right now so i hope to see more variety rather than uh just stun nuke stun nuke stun nuke whether you're a warrior a, war a ranger or a mage you know i want to see some variety and that is the number four thing on my list so now we are getting into our top three okay and I want to see more or better animations for cutscenes. Now, as you guys can see from the screen right now, this is from an older quest. This is from the Assassin class quest. And I actually stumbled upon this quest during my Let's Play AQ series that uh, just ended at somewhere near the uh, start of this year. So I will link the series, the playlist uh, on the top right hand corner right now so you guys can go ahead and check that out. So I stumbled upon this quest and I was absolutely amazed at the standard of the entire cutscene that this quest had. Okay, so I'm just going to click through all the dialogue here so you guys can see for yourself. So AQ actually has done pretty amazing cutscenes before. It's not just boring cutscenes like we see nowadays with uh, little to no animation. Like look at this. This is crazy guys. Look at Look at this. This is insane. Like, when will we see this standard of cutscene again? I know it is a lot more work for the developers, but come on, look at this. This is freaking awesome, dude. Like, oh my gosh. This is probably one of the best cutscenes, if not the best cutscene I've seen inside of AQ. Like, have you seen anything like that before? I have not. This is crazy, guys. Look at it. Like, the amount of animation work that went into this is just freaking... I, I don't even know. Words can't even express how I feel about this cutscene. It's just so amazing. So AQ has done something like this before. My question is, why are they not doing something like this for every single quest? Yes, I know it's a lot more work, but... uh, Holy crap, if every single quest had amazing cutscenes like that, then... Wow, the, the entire standard of questing inside of AQ will just go up so much more. Now, AQ, why people play it for is mostly for the gameplay aspect, not so much for the story and questing aspect, okay? Each of Artix's games has its own uh, speciality that draw people to it. For DF, it's the entire storyline and the storytelling aspect, how they do an amazing work for the quests, not as much for the gameplay in my opinion. For AQ, it's more the gameplay, you have a variety of different uh, styles and different builds that you can play. Of course, like I mentioned in my previous point, Stun New King is the meta currently, but you know, you still have many other viable builds. Though not as efficient as Stun New King, but they are viable, they are still good inside of the game. But that being said, the storytelling inside of AQ, I feel it is not as polished as a game like uh, Dragon Fable, for instance. So maybe both games 
can take some pointers from each other maybe df can look at aq on how they do their stuff uh for the gameplay aspect and maybe aq can look at df on how they do their stuff for the storytelling and questing as aspect and you know uh, really this will really drive up the standard of both games like it's it's basic what i'm basically asking for is the best of both worlds you know have fantastic storytelling in both games and have fantastic gameplay in both games that is what i really want to see and with animations like that you really can't argue so aq is no stranger to excellent animations but you know i feel that recently the standard of quests uh just has not been as good as it was uh during the period when the assassin quests came out so hopefully we can see more or better animations for cutscenes inside the future it doesn't have to be for every quest maybe a mastercraft quest or some special quest you could uh, maybe you could put in a little bit more effort i'm not saying the staff is not putting in effort don't get me wrong don't shoot me in the comments i know the staff works very hard and they are very understaffed right now but you know if we can have something like this that increases the quality of life for players inside of the game then it will draw many other people back into the game or even new players you know what i mean and number two on the list is music in cutscenes or quests. So uh, my game sound effects is turned on right now, but there is nothing, no sound at all. And that really, really makes the whole dialogue and everything boring and uh, not that interesting. You couple that with the more profound English that is used nowadays, it makes the whole storytelling aspect pretty... I would say boring in my opinion like dragon fable a huge part of why their quests are so fantastic it's because they include sound into their quests uh they include music you know you can maybe add some frost veil music for this uh it doesn't have to be any original tracks i'm pretty sure the entire ae company as a whole they can share their music tracks i know df takes some tracks from aq once in a while so maybe aq can take some tracks from uh no, I mean DF takes some tracks from AQ Worlds once in a while and uh, AQ has been known to not really have music at all. You just have the sound effects but I think music will make the whole storytelling more immersive and uh, really it will just drive up the overall value and quality of life when people are doing questing it just immerses them into a mood with a good soundtrack and i think df does a very very good job of this so maybe uh aq can take some of df's soundtracks or some of aq worlds soundtracks that fits into the current quest and i think it'll just make the whole uh storytelling and questing a lot more enjoyable especially when you're watching cutscenes instead of it just being completely silent like you don't really have the mood you know when you're just reading a wall of text and uh not having any music to immerse yourself into right and i think this is not very hard to implement it's just a simple thing of chucking in a soundtrack right i'm though i don't do game design but i'm sure it is not difficult to implement this at all if the staff really wanted to so hopefully we can see this uh in the new f near future and i think the whole uh, questing experience in AQ will be a lot better with this change. One. And the number one thing that I want to see inside of Adventure Quest is the Archmage class. That's right guys. This video was uploaded in 2011 by this person called Deathbringer. Okay, I don't know who he is. I don't even know if he plays the game anymore. But this class uh, was talked about in 2011 and if I am not wrong but don't quote me on this it was one of the personal projects for one of AQ's coders at that time but he already left AE okay uh, to pursue a PhD and I think he didn't come back so I'm not really sure if we'll ever see this class if at all just recently if I remember correctly I read somewhere on the official battle on forums that the staff said that they have plans on bringing Archmage. It won't be next year because next year we'll be seeing the Necromancer revamp. I hope it will be the year after that and personally I am very excited if this were ever to come into the game. This class was so hyped and talked about so much and this video that you're seeing right here this was the preview on their uh, official page at that point of time. Just look at it. This is sick man. This is freaking sick like holy crap when will we see it again like will we ever see it inside the game will this game still be here after two years hopefully it will be and hopefully we'll see the Archmage class in 2022 i don't know if it will still come out at that point of time but hopefully the staff keeps to their word and many people are still very hyped up 
for this class even though they've sort of resigned to the fact that it will never come out but uh, recently one of the staff members did say on the battle on problems about how the staff how they actually plan on uh, making this class now and uh, after re-looking at it for like the past what it's like nine nine years ago after re-looking at it from nine years ago seeing that there is still hype for it i think they decided that yes they are going to do this but it's uh going to be pushed all the way at the back so we will probably see this if it comes out in 2022 or later but man i hope they find time to do this sooner because Archmage is something that uh, every single AQ player, especially players at that point of time, really look forward to and hopefully we can still see at some point in the future. So that is it for my top 10 list. Let me know what you guys think of my list. Do you agree or disagree with me? And don't get me wrong, I am not complaining about the stuff inside of AQ. I think AQ is a fantastic game and the only reason why I'm suggesting this is because I love the game so much and I only want the game to improve, to be better, to join more players and at the same time to make the experience of players playing the game more enjoyable so that's it for this video hope you guys have enjoyed if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more such future content till the next time i'm your host korban gaming peace out